What's up, G1 Nation? Sean Hines here reporting for Screw Attack on the show four of PAX Prime 2014. I'm joined by Michael DePlatter. Yep. He is the director of design at Monolith for Middle Earth's Shadow of Mordor. I just got through playing my first, my first playthrough of this game ever. I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan, and I was pleasantly surprised that it is not a clone of Assassin's Creed. I'm telling you guys right now, I know it feels like, like just by watching the trailers, you think, oh, Assassin's Creed. It's not, it's a little different. But the biggest thing for me was the Wraith power. So tell me how you guys decided to settle on him being half human, half Wraith. Well, you know, we arrived at it from a number of different directions. I'd say very beginning, uh, our first sort of starting point in imagining, you know, who do we want to play as a hero within Middle Earth was what if Boromir had have gotten the One Ring? What if he had have taken the ring? Uh, what would have happened? And he would have gone down that path. He would have ended up becoming a ring wraith. And so that's a big thing about uh, Talion's power. The, your ability for mob management varies from, you know, the brutality of a flurry of attacks against a single enemy to kind of controlling somebody to fight with you alongside as you're fighting all these other enemies. Do you have a preference when you go into, you know, fighting like 10 guys at once? What do you, how do you like to approach that scenario? Well, it's funny. So um, one of the things I really like uh, about playing our game, and obviously played it through start to finish a lot of, a lot of times, is the growth in power of, of your character. So when you first go into Mordor, before Celebrimbor's remembered who he is, you don't have anything like that level of power. And, and Mordor's a very dangerous place. You know, one doesn't simply walk in. And, One does not walk into Mordor. And it's pretty conclusive for most of our playtesting, people will die. But of course death's interesting because you resurrect, the world evolves. So it's really quite hard and quite challenging. But your power, the growth of your power, especially as you get the ability to manipulate, turn these guys on each other, is, uh, is, is really large. So what at the beginning is this very dangerous, very deadly, very threatening place closer to the, the end of the game really becomes your playground and at that point turning them on each other, making them slaughter each other, farming them up, um, really changes up the game a lot. So it, there's, there's a real evolution to the feeling of playing the game and to your effect in the world as you get deeper in. You, you mentioned the playground aspect of it. Um, I really felt the playground part come through with the, the creatures that you could mount. Yeah. Um, we saw a dog-like creature and we had like a almost like a cyclops or like a big uh, uh, troll, yep. something like that. Uh, is there any any other uh, creatures that you could talk about that we could look forward to from the world of Middle Earth? Um, we do something we really wanted to do that was was really interesting to us in looking at Mordor as an ecosystem. Was that idea if you've got the fell beast and it says you know they're creatures of an older world or and the great beast that's pulling Gron. So we wanted it to almost be like this lost world. And I want to kind of backtrack a little bit how you said like death is kind of just a part of this game because you know you're reborn but also we noticed in the nemesis system it creates a lot of contrasts and adversaries and and these orcs that are constantly trying to climb the ranks how do you make that all work like what's the secret to the formula of building these weird relationships between all these characters that's a, that's a, a, a big question um, the trick it well the key is that every single discipline on the team had to uh, come together and contribute to it because what we're really trying to do is make memorable villains. So you're going to fight a lot of orcs through the game and you're not going to remember all of them, but there's going to be three or four or five that really stand out and are really like your own personal arch villains, you know, and, and that you're going to remember. So it's not about sort of even trying to cover every situation or remember everything. It's about trying to capture the most memorable moments that are created by the player, remembering those, growing in response to those, and making it feel like a, a story. Absolutely, so that's Shadow of the Mordor, guys. Be sure to check it out. It's coming out in like a month, right? Yeah, it's coming out on September the 29th, uh, North America. I think it's October 2nd in um, Europe and the rest of the world, so. And that's a next-gen uh, platforms? Yes, so that's um, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, uh, PC, yep. All right, excellent, thanks for your time, Michael. Be sure to stay tuned to Screw Attack for all your PAX Prime 2014 coverage.